Jesus, you love me too much, oh, too much, oh. you love me too much, oh. join me if you know that God loves you, mm, unconditional love, I can feel his presence already, thank you Jesus, Holy Spirit, you are welcome, Malebronta. Thank you for your love. <laughs> no one can love us like you do. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise. Thank you for loving us too much. Too much. Thank you, Jesus. Too much. I just want you to appreciate his love. Thank him for showing you kindness. When everyone abandoned you, he kept you. 
He showed you love. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I'd like you to join me to appreciate God for his endless love. I'd like you to thank God for his unconditional love. I'd like you to join me wherever you're watching me from. For his everlasting love. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3. He said, I have loved you with an everlasting love. God loves you so much. That was why when that company was downsizing, he kept your job. He kept your husband's job. He kept your wife's job. I appreciate God. Because of God's excess love for you, you didn't die on your sick bed. That attack on your health, you survived it. Not because the doctors were experts, but because God manifested himself as Jehovah Rapha. Mm. Give him all the praise for his love upon your life. Appreciate God for his love. Because of his love for you, all of those jealous haters, those naysayers and negative people who are angry over your success, they couldn't pull you down. God frustrated their agenda. He disappointed their devices. Their hands could not perform their enterprise. Job chapter 5 verse 12. The Bible says he disappointed the devices of the crafty. That their hands could not perform their enterprise. I like you to appreciate God. No one can love you like God. Thank him for his love. Appreciate him. Give him all the glory. Give him all the praise that is due unto him. God is not holding his peace. So that you can go forth as brightness. Because he loves you. In the day, God became a pillar of cloud. In the night, a pillar of fire. Protecting you. <laughs> Thank him for his love. I want you to open your mouth. It wasn't those security men that protected you. No. When the wicked ones shoot their arrows, no security man can handle the arrows of the wicked. God didn't allow the arrow of the wicked to hit you. You have seen the very last Sunday because he loved you. I just want you to appreciate him. He allowed that testimony to manifest because he loved you. Father, will thank you. Open your mouth and begin to appreciate God for his love. Father, I thank you for your love upon my life, my family. Thank you, oh God, for the love you have shown me. I give you all the praise. I magnify your name. I celebrate you, Lord. I appreciate you. On behalf of every member of Understanding Life, thank you, Jesus, for the love you have shown. We give you all the praise for your excess love that is kind of patient. For your, oh God, unconditional love. We appreciate you, Father. Be thou exalted. In Jesus' name we have given thanks. I hope you shouted a loud amen. Thank you so much. I can see every one of you already. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you so much. Thank you. As you are coming in, just type a word for me to know that you are with me. Just type a word. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate every one of you. How was the Christmas celebration? I hope you had a fabulous celebration yes and I, I know you're already warming up for the new year a wise man humorously said that the new year celebration is uh the naming ceremony of jesus christ well thank god for thus far he has led us we're really grateful to him for his love and kindness and mercies over us we're grateful unto god now, tomorrow is the 31st of December, the very last day in the year 2018. I hope you are ready for the crossover service. I just want to say, please go to the church for your crossover, not the clubhouse. All right? A lot of people in the name of, I want to go for crossover, they went to clubhouse. Instead of them to cross over to the new year, they cross over to the other side. So, don't go to the clubhouse. Go to the house of God. 
and cross over into the new year. It's going to be a good year. And it's also a time where you need to sit down and reflect on the year. Maybe the course of the year, you set goals, career goals, spiritual goals. Probably you said to yourself, I'm going to study the Bible before the end of this, of this year and you couldn't achieve your goals. You set educational goals, whatever goals. This is the time to sit down. Maybe you experienced some kind of failure in the, count, in the course of the year or disappointment. This is the time for you to sit down and ask yourself some questions instead of you to just throw a pity party and criticize yourself. No, sit down, ask yourself, where did I get it wrong? Why did I fail? What should I do to experience success? What should I stop doing so I don't fail next time? So it's very important, all right, for you to sit down and reflect on the year. It's going to be a good year by the special grace of God. Thank you so much. I can see every one of you and I'm waving back at you. Thank you very much for joining me. And if you're signing in for the very first time, my name is Mrs. Favor Vitry, a woman of God appointed by God for this generation. I am an accountant by training, a U.S. certified life coach. I am the founder of Understanding Life. Every Sunday, I'm here doing what I was born to do, preaching the word of God, talking about every issue of life, Helping people to write and pass the exams of life in order for them to be joyful and enjoy life. God has been using this internet ministry to be a blessing to multitudes across the globe. And I know you will not be left out. Two days ago, a member of this family was talking to me. She said to me, she had a disappointment and she told me and I said a word. She said, shortly after I, I, I gave her my words, I spoke the word God laid in my heart to, to tell her. She said, that disappointment was converted to a testimony. And I know that you, joining me for the first time, you will not be left out in the name of Jesus Christ. I'd like you to invite friends and family members. Let everyone know that Understanding Life is on Facebook Live. And I will not fail to appreciate every one of you that sent in your comments and your contributions. Especially those of you that shared this video. Thank you so much. A lot of people share my video. But I just want, you to, I just want to say to you, each time you share my video, endeavor to just type shared. So that I will know that you are sharing this video. Because everyone partnering with me. To market Christ to the dying world. I go on my knees to pray for them. Everyone partnering with me. To share this video. So that souls will be saved. Into the kingdom. I go on my knees to pray for them. When I pray. God answers my prayers. Those people who are close to me. And believe on the grace of God upon my life. Can attest to this fact. As you join me. To spread the good news. Thank you so much, Ndubisi, <laughs> for joining me. Thank you. Mehmet, I can see every one of you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. i like you to know that as you share this video, you are a kingdom ambassador. You are helping to market Christ to the dying world. Remember what the Bible says in Luke chapter 15 verse 7. He said there is joy in heaven over one soul that repents. As people give their life to Christ and there is joy in heaven, God in turn will announce you to your world. God in turn will turn you to a celebrity. He will bless you and lift you up. A particular guy by name Sylvester was just sharing this video, Mohammed Sadiq. <laughs> I'm waving back at you. Thank you for joining me. Thank you so much. Thank you. As you're signing in, just send a word. Type a word for me to know that you're with me. Thank you so much. Yes, Sylvester. 
he was just sharing the video through Facebook Messenger. And someone that got the video told me that she was really blessed. All right? Sylvester, I, I, my God and your God will bless you. Every one of you, Idris, Maswell, thank you for joining me. I'm with me back at you. Thank you. Sylvester, my God will bless you. The God that called me will surprise you. And every one of you that shared this video, my God will lift you up. My God will surprise you. He will bless you. Thank you, Sunday. I are in there. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Thank you. God bless you, really good. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. God will surprise every one of you. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. Yes, please, no calls. Because Nombe Samuel. <laughs> Thank you for watching me. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. Please, no calls. All right? Because if you call, it's going to affect the network. Thank you, Joy. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's going to affect the network. All right? So, no calls. Don't call me on Facebook Messenger. I'll give you my content details at the end of this program. All right? All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. I can see every one of you already. Thank you. Okay. Now, last week, I was talking about what newlyweds should expect after their honeymoon. All right? Today, I'll be bringing to a close this series. Okay? And by January, I'll go straight to what God wants me to talk about. Kenneth Awful. <laughs> I am waving back at you. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Adebayo Afiz. <laughs> I'm waving back at you. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs> Don't stop. All right. Okay. I was talking about what newlyweds. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Should expect. <laughs> this is really nice. Thank you. When. After their honeymoon. Okay? And I had a long list. I couldn't finish it because of time. Online care. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much. I couldn't finish it because of time. Okay? So today I'm just going to chip in two other things. Daniel is here. Thank you, Daniel, for watching me. I appreciate you. Thank you. I'm just going to uh, say two other things. Because they're very important. And then I'll just close. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Daniel. Yes. So I just go and say two other things. And then I'll bring this series to a close by telling you what it means to get married for the wrong reasons. Okay. Now, if before you got married, you were a working class lady, just know it. That after marriage, automatically you have two jobs. Because you are going to be working indoors and outdoors. Okay? You are going to do the house chores. You are going to cook. It's very important we say this thing because this awareness is important. Because a lot of young ladies, they just go into marriage with high expectation. And when they are disappointed, they are pained, they are sad, they are frustrated. So it's good you know these things. Automatically you are going to have two jobs. You're going to be working indoors and outdoors. You're going to do the house chores. You're going to cook. Okay? You're going to do the laundry. And you're still going to do your 5 to 9, your 9 to 5 job. All right? You're still going to do it. No one is going to help you. I know that juggling all of this is a huge task. For me, I have some women that I look up to as my role models. I, also, I usually say to myself, if they can do it, I also can do it. So you don't need to be fed up. All right? You're going to cook. There will be no difference between you and that woman that runs a restaurant. The only difference will be that she cooks for a large number of people <laughs> and you are cooking for your family. Okay? Before I got married, anytime I didn't feel like cooking, I could just take beverages, fruit, and I'll go to bed. But now it's not possible. You have to cook for the family. 
Okay, so this is very important for you to know this. You are really going to be busy. You are going to have two jobs. It's very important that you know this and get ready for that. And another thing I want to say is that as soon as you get married, okay, don't go. I really want to channel this advice to the ladies, okay? Because a lot of ladies, they go into marriage with this belief that they are always going to have their way. Auntie, it's not like that, too. Krista, <laughs> thank you for joining me. I can see you. Thank you. Auntie, it's not like that. You're not always going to have your way. It's important I say these things. That's the truth. On this platform, I'm really frank with you. You're really not going to have your way. You will see the man demanding for his respect. I told you men are egoistic in nature. If you didn't, if you've not been following me, please go to my previous video and watch so you can learn. All right? The man is going to demand for his respect. And you will see him. He will want to have his way. Okay? My advice is don't just lord it over him. Don't lord it over your husband. Don't make your husband feel you are the boss. It's not going to work. I've been in this thing for years and I can tell you. Okay? Because the best thing to do, like what I do, all right, is to go into my closet. I don't argue with my husband. Go into my closet and I'll pray to God. Especially when I know that what I'm saying is going to be of great benefit, immense benefit to the family. All right, I go into my closet. I pray to God that Lord touch his heart because what I'm telling him is going to bless every one of us. All right, remember what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1. It said the heart of a king is in the Lord's hand. Okay, so it works and it will always work because the word of God. Sometimes if you play very well, you'll see the man walk up to you and say, all right, I think we should do it your way. It's better than fighting, boxing yourself. It won't work. So you will not always have your way. So you won't just want to start. It's not possible. The best thing is to go on your knees and pray. Okay? And today before I go off air because my time is running out again, I walk with time. I want to say, I want to bring this series to a close by telling you what it means to get married for the wrong reasons. A lot of people are married today for the wrong reasons. And they are sad, suffering, and smiling. <laughs> they come outside and smile, but they are inside their heart, they are pained. Okay, so it's very important. Thank you <laughs> for joining me. It's very important for you to know what it means to get married for the wrong reasons. And I'm going to bring to a close. Thank you, Pavitran <laughs> Gopalan, for watching me. Thank you. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. All right. Okay. I'll bring, it, I'll bring the series to a close by telling you what it means to get married. Happy last Sunday. Yes. Happy last Sunday to you also, Milfoy. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right so if you get married because of family pressure because of pressure from friends you are getting married for the wrong reason and you're not going to find it funny when you get into the marriage i want to say, so say to parents don't force your children into marriage Allow God to have his way in their lives. All right? He created them. He has plans for them. Don't force them into marriage. So if you get married because of pressure, family pressure, you are doing it wrongly. Okay? Secondly, if you get married because time is running out, age is not on your side, even though the guy is not God's will for you, he's not your kind of person, you really don't like this person, you just want the marriage ring on your hand. So that people will say you are married. You want to please people and be depressed. You are getting married for the wrong reason. Okay? This is very important. Don't. Alright? If you get married because... Hey, the boy is rich because of his family background, because of his status. You are getting married for the wrong reason. Listen to me. If you marry that girl because she's from a rich home, 
The parents will not pay your bills all your life. You will need to work yourself to fend for yourself. The only thing they can do, maybe they just throw a society wedding for you. And listen to me, they're not just really training it for you, they're training it for themselves just to make a name for themselves. So it's not wisdom to say you want to get married because of the guy's status and family background or the guest status or family background. You are getting married for the wrong reason. This is the truth. And if you get married because the guy is a worker in the church, <laughs> because the girl is a worker in the church, you are getting married for the wrong reason. Okay? Truth be told, Going to church does not make you a Christian. It doesn't make anyone a Christian. All right? Arm robbers, prostitutes, they go to church. This is the truth. If you remember what the Bible says, it said in, in Ma Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, it said, I have sent you as sheep among wolves. All right? So, there are agents of darkness in the church. The Bible says in Job chapter 2 verse 1, it said when the sons of men went to present themselves to God, Satan also went to present himself to God. So even in the presence of God, you have devils. So it would be wrong for you to say you want to get married because somebody is an usher in the church. is very fervent. What if that person is an agent? He brings you into the house and he will usher you out of his house. As an usher, he will, he will just usher you out of his house. You get married to that girl because she's a singer in the choir. And you, oh, oh, cool, Dilly. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. I'm waving back at you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And you get married to that lady because she's a singer in the church. She knows how to sing. She comes into the house and begins to sting you. A singer. Stinging you. <laughs> You'll be frustrated. So don't marry because someone is a church worker. Don't marry because someone is fervent in the church. That's not it. Activity does not equal spirituality. This is very important. So if you do that, you are getting married for the wrong reason. Watch it. The Bible says, but why is as serpent and harmless as dove be wise this is very important okay so my time is running out again today and this is what i have to say but i want to just say this that i don't know who you are with right now i don't know who that girl is who that guy is if you are not sure that that person is your would-be spouse please end the relationship now don't waste your time with that person. Listen to me. In life, we don't waste time. We invest time. The worst thing that can ever happen to you is to love the wrong person. So don't waste your time with that person. If you know. Not even only your would-be spouse. Anybody you call your friend that, ha that has no respect for you relegate you to the floor. You don't need to hang out with that person. You don't. You need to... Push that person aside. It's not a good friend. People will go and backstab you. Bring you down. A good friend will defend you. Will run you down. So watch it. Be wise. Don't waste your time with such people. Those negative people. Those naysayers. Don't. Don't. You have a great future ahead of you. Don't allow wrong relationship, friendship to destroy it. This is very important. So this is what I want to say for today. And next month, God has given me a topic already. I was going to do friendship series, but he said to me, this is what you are going to teach for January. And he gave me a topic for each week. Let me just say to you, I need to give you the topic because you don't need to miss out of any of the series. For God to give me this topic the very first month in the year 2019. It means God is set to set someone free. God is ready to liberate someone. 
God is ready to turn the captivity of someone. God is ready to put an end to that affliction. He said to me, the topic for January is let my people go. That's what God said to me in the place of prayer. He said, lose them and let them go. Whoever has tied you, judgment will visit them in the name of Jesus as you connect with me. Whoever has vowed that you will not go forward, God will make them know that power belongs to him. Get ready. You're going to have an encounter that you've never had since you gave your life to Christ. Remember what the Bible says. In Exodus chapter 14, verse 15, God was speaking to Moses. He said, speak to the people that they go forward. God is said to put an end to every stagnation of your life. That prison door is about to open. God was speaking in Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 3. He said, you have gone around this mountain long enough. God is set to bring you out of that bondage. Please. You will not be doing yourself any good if you miss out of any of the series for January. Tell everyone that you know that God is set to set them free. And I know you're going to have a testimony in the precious name of Jesus Christ. All right? Before I go today, I'm going to give you my contact details. Okay? My email address is understanding life with favor at gmail.com. Understanding life with favor at gmail.com. And then my call, my phone number, WhatsApp message only. No calls. Just send me a WhatsApp message. If it's important for me to call you, I'll call you because I don't have the time to take calls. It's plus four three. Okay. All right. Yes. Just message only. Okay. WhatsApp message. If there is need for me to call you, I will call you. Plus four three six eight eight six four two six nine nine eight four. I take that again. Plus four three six eight eight six. Four two six nine nine eight four. That's my WhatsApp number. Okay, and now we have come to the very important aspect of this program, which is the salvation of your soul. If you know you don't have relationship with God, this is the time for you to surrender your life to Christ. Listen to me. There is no one that can love you more than God. That's the truth. God demonstrated his love for us when he sent his son, Jesus, to die for us. Your wife that claims to love you can die for you. Who, who can die for you? No one. That shows that no one can love you like God. Your husband cannot die for you. The best thing that can ever happen to you is to surrender your life to Christ. It's salvation. This is very important. I'd like you to surrender your life to God. Whatever you are looking for, it has it. But you need to be part of the family before you can enjoy it. And remember, it is foolishness, not wisdom, to go after worldly possession without a relationship with God. Because you will die and leave those things. There is life after death. That's the truth. Man is flesh, and his days shall be 120. Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. And remember, when you are going, you are not going with anything. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 7. We came to this world with nothing. Certainly, we are going to return with nothing. So all of those things, I'm not telling you it's not good to be blessed. I am blessed. That's why that scripture has kept me going. I've never cut corners because of worldly possession. I am my husband. And God has helped us. So whatever you are looking for, God has it. But you need to surrender your life to Christ. It's very easy. 
Time is fast spent. Just say this salvation prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. Come into my life and save me. Wash me clean with your precious blood. Write my name in the book of life. Thank you, Father, for forgiving me my sins. Thank you for accepting me as your child. If you said this prayer, you are born again. You're saved. You're a child of God. Look for a Bible-believing church where they preach the word of God. Join a service group and start to serve the Lord. And watch how God will bless you. Thank you so much for joining me again today. Until I come your way again next week, Sunday by 6 p.m., I wish you Happy New Year in advance. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.